Suppose you had all that and more in action and in color. That'd be worth a fortune, wouldn't it? Oh, yes. It's a great time to make your family movie stars. Let's consider what sort of image you want to portray. In addition to blindly brainstorming, hoping for a creative breakthrough, it might be worthwhile supplementing this with a systematic approach. Looking at YouTube virals, it's easy to fall into the trap of wanting to portray your brand as funny, with it, and cutting edge. But these things can become dated. They can also attract the wrong attention. You can be popular, but broke. A systematic approach would be to review your brand against some common psychological and demographic parameters. There are plenty of paid and free resources on the web to help you do that. Personality questionnaires may help you work out an image. These questionnaires have been used to help authors devise characters for their novels. That's pretty close to what you're trying to do. But you have to think not only of yourself, but your business as well as your clients and your customers. There are many psychological models that can help you. They're often used by big advertising firms. Take, for instance, this famous circumplex. These theories have been reviewed countless times with hundreds of thousands of people, so should be able to give you ideas for your brand image. Bear in mind that sometimes you may even be seeking to attract opposites. A shy intellectual introvert may want to get help from an athletic extrovert. That's why they've found your online dating agency. But this same athlete may want help on the intellectual side with passing exams. So this is part science and part art. Another source of ideas is the United States federal government. Their Bureau of Labor Statistics has analyzed thousands of jobs in terms of knowledge, skills, conditions, and interests. Of special relevance is their mapping of the circumplex model of Dr. John Holland. These dimensions cover the world of work and can be mapped to personality traits such as the Big Five system. So for example, my music education system, entered into the database, throws up a number of related careers. We can see that the people I'm targeting in this sector have some of the following attributes. Social and artistic interests. Fine arts, education, English history, philosophy, and music therapists, similarly social, artistic, and investigative. So a brand image appealing to these folks could have quite a broad sweep, but particularly highbrow culture with a focus on people. How about my other lines of work? Let's take psychology in the legal sector as an expert witness. Again, we see a number of related occupations such as lawyer, and forensic psychologist. Investigative, social, and artistic. Enterprising, investigative, artistic. Both have an investigative, scientific role. But surprisingly, they require an artistic side. This is because a lot of what they do does not have a scientific basis, but has to be created. So I may not have to be too serious after all. They may like a slightly wacky image that appeals to their artistic side. So these free resources can give you ideas about image. Identifying your customer is not always straightforward. Ultimately, it's who pays the bill for your goods or services. That is not always the end user. They might be buying a gift. The end user isn't the one who did the searching. Then there are intermediaries, like the search engines themselves. They have a mind of their own. They read text, not pictures. So keywords and inbound links are their language. And the image you want to portray may not be the image your customers and the web are seeking. For example, you may run a respectable practice, a law firm, or a psychological counselor. These are very personal services, and those in need of them are in a serious mood at the time. It probably won't help if they find your personal pages as their first point of contact and there you are singing karaoke in a bright Hawaiian shirt. You may want to share that great holiday adventure you had on the yacht but it may be just the sort of thing to turn off potential clients who think you overcharge. So business and social brands must be carefully balanced. 
A social presence can help if it shows your human side, but maybe not too human. If you apply for government service jobs, it may work against you if you have a lot of one-sided political rants on your social media. On the other hand, some balanced scholarly articles in respectable journals might help such a career. There are many details to consider. A logo may eventually be important to a business. Your personal brand will have a logo even if you haven't specifically designed one because whatever image the visitor is left with is by default your logo, for better or worse. So it's better if you have a say in it. Thinking ahead, even the typeface you use is a form of logo. Serif fonts like Times New Roman convey a traditional serious image. They're also easy to read for long texts. Sans serif, like Arial, gives a modern look and for short pieces fits well with just about anything. But there are thousands of other choices. Even courier typewriter style is used effectively in TV shows to convey a mystery image secret archives and dossiers. The web page only supports a limited font choice. Anything fancy will become a graphic image. Remember, the search engines don't read pictures, so your keywords have to be somewhere in the text. The layout is a form of logo. Copywriters use these conversational single sentences, like this, short phrases. But this has become cliché, so think twice. It may brand you as a copywriter. WordPress and other content systems have plenty of templates if you don't want to hire a web designer. The search engines like WordPress blog structure as it has a consistent format that the algorithms can easily navigate. But clearly that won't suit everyone. If you're a graphic designer, you don't want your image to be someone who uses canned templates. You'd want to show off a creative custom site.